What is the biggest betrayal you have faced? I looked up to a man who was a friend, a mentor, and like a father figure to me. He convinced me to leave my position and come work for him. He would get me promoted and help me achieve my goals. He needed me on his team, etc. I went to work for him and it was like Jekyll and Hyde. He insulted me, talked about me behind my back, used me as a scapegoat for the problems he was having with the rest of his staff, and in fact, completely derailed my reputation and career. It took me 4 years of busting my butt to get my reputation back. I still don't understand why. One of the worst experiences of my life. During my first marriage I inherited a wonderful stepdaughter. We had two daughters together and one Christmas my grandmother sent presents, but only for our little two, not my stepdaughter. I try to see the best in people, so I call my dad to see if she forgot. Well we all know when people are caught off guard, they blurt the truth. Apparently, she told my dad that if she had to buy gifts for all the stepkids they would be on the poor house. Mind you, this is her only step grandchild, and at the time she is at her vacation home in AZ. Now, I'm P. I box up the gifts and send them back to her with a letter saying family is family. It doesn't matter who gave birth to that child, she is my daughter. She just didn't get it, still doesn't. And my dad for fear of getting written out of the will, sided with grandma. So we don't talk either. It's sad, but I stood my ground and for cause. I may not be married to the girl's dad anymore, but I still love her as my own. You are the best stepmom ever. All my friends in junior high stopped talking to me one day, claimed I was too odd to be their friend, proceeded to bully me through the rest of junior high. I was really quiet and shy. It was a rough few years. My girlfriend's mother abused her for 27 years before she sought help and got away. She has a 2 year old, not mine, and her mother still wants custody even though the court has told her no. The week leading up to Christmas her mom flooded her email box with emails asking her when she is going to kill herself, telling her that nobody likes her, suggesting methods to end her life, etc. It would take too long to type it all out. But it's worse than any horror movie. It may not be a betrayal in the traditional sense, but it is a betrayal for any mother to do this to their flesh and blood. Change all contact info and get her the frick out of her life. That is ridiculous. My girlfriend up and left me for my best friend one day. He lived with my three other good friends who didn't really go out of their way to help me get through it. So every night I was free I had to choose between wallowing alone or going to my friend's house and seeing them together. Frick that. New friend's brother. It buy you a drink. Or eight. My ex stepdad tried to have sex with me when I was 15. He was my father since I was 6. And suddenly decided he didn't want it to be anymore. When I told my mom. She confronted him and he denied everything duh. She told me I was a liar and had invented it. I couldn't believe it. The feeling of not being safe in your own home family was horrible. Without my mother watching my back, I felt so unsafe that I ran to another country just before my 16th birthday. I'm 29 now, and we've talked it out. I forgave her, and she left him many years after that, but it still hurts. That must have felt awful when your mom didn't take your side. I'm sorry that happened. My father cut me out of his life. The price of our relationship to him. $20,000. He always was a deadbeat but I never saw it. He was my dad. I always saw him through rose colored glasses I suppose. Parents were divorced when I was 5. My brother was 7. And my brother could see through his bulls but I couldn't. At 10 my brother stopped visiting dad altogether and saw him maybe 5 times in total through his teenage adult life. Not me though I was always there for our dad, when he was sad because he cheated on his gf. Spoiler alert. He cheated on all his gfs, and she left him I gave him my cap to keep him company while I wasn't visiting. I was 11ish so this was the best I could do. I always defended him to my brother and mom but truth be told he always was a rather terrible person. I saw this as an adult but heck he's my dad I love him anyway. Brother kills himself and dad finds out he's entitled to 50% of my brother's estate. He was a 30 year old alcoholic. His home was his only asset and he also hadn't filed his taxes in 2 years. 
Dad tells me not to worry he won't be going after my mom for his 50% he will sign whatever needs to be signed and won't cause problems. Two weeks later mom calls me and says dad won't even sign the paper so she can't move on with dealing with the estate never mind signing away his half. I called him assuming there was some sort of misunderstanding. He proceeded to yell and scream at me that I was a money hungry bee just like my mother blah blah blah. Completely unprovoked. This way he could justify taking the money and freaking off which is exactly what he did. I'm such an idiot when it comes to this stuff my husband had to explain it to me. I didn't need that kind of anger in me so a couple months later I did send him a message letting him know I've forgiven him for what he's done and I hope he's happy and well. Never heard back. Meanwhile I then had to explain to my two boys why they aren't seeing grandpa anymore either. This was our second Christmas with no brother or dad for me. It's still very crappy. TLDR. Dad took brother's blood money and told me to frick off. That is absolutely heartbreaking. Giving him your cat, however, is just painfully adorable. When Dove started putting 3 ice cream bars in a box instead of 4. At first, I thought it was a mistake. Upon further inspection, I saw some small text stating there were 3 bars inside. They didn't even lower the price. I have never been so disappointed and hurt in my life roommates and I were going to be moving into a new place but I was waiting for them to give me a copy of the lease to sign. They waited until moving day to inform me that they didn't want me to move in with them. I had 12 hours to find a new place to live and had to move in with my girlfriend, whom I hated and soon broke up with, for a few days. I learned the hard way that nobody at that time liked me, so I changed my personality for the better. I was recruited by a well-known company, who convinced me to move my family from the city we loved, sold my family home, gave up my well-established 17-year business and income, then worked like a dog for a year building up a failing competitor, invested nearly $250,000, turned them around, nearly doubled the business in a year, then got shown the door at the end of the year when it was time for my permanent contract. I've spent the past 5 years rebuilding nearly next door out of pure spite, spanking them daily at every chance I get. I've rebuilt the income I once had and now it can't be taken from me in any way by corporate shills. Hate can be one heck of an inspiration. I get over it a bit more every day, but watching the person they shoved in to take my place slowly lose what they took from me has been quite healing. Still, that day, that knife in the back, betrayal seems a tame word. Being called friends with benefit behind my back by my partner to one of his friend. Feels like I'm just a fool all this while. My goddamn brain. Had my phone in my left hand and toilet paper on the other. Proceeded to wipe my butt with my phone and drop it in the toilet without realizing. I can't stop laughing. So I am having a party. A buddy of mine who had a habit of getting really pee off for small thing and taking revenge. Revenge was some petty bulls that you won't even know about. Like he spit in my wallet. So one night he gets pee. Chuckles goes and pops holes in all my condoms. That's bad. But he comes back the next day saying he forgot something and throws them away. As I am being told this story I also learned that another one of our friends at the time watched him do it. Watched him do it and did said nothing. I asked him why he didn't say anything and he said he didn't want chuckles to mad at him. To me, that was the worst thing about the story and I told him so. That wasn't the only time he watched people freaking up in my place and did nothing. He is the type of person that can do no wrong. The kind that can do whatever he wants and you should forgive him because your friends and everyone owes him something. Like he refuses to acknowledge that some of the crap he does is fricked up. His mom and him got into a fight. He went out got drunk drove back home. Crap went down. We don't know what exactly because he didn't think he did anything wrong. His mom has him arrested and a 2 year restraining order placed on him. That crap doesn't happen unless you did something. We've not been friends for some time now, and I told him it's because he's in butthole. He's one of the worst people I've met and I've met some really bad people. But those people at least understood their crappy behavior was crappy. My ex-boyfriend and my ex best friend started seeing each other behind my back whilst we were still dating. I had been with my partner for 3, 1 stroke 2 years but I had known him for most of my life and the friend that I had was someone that I trusted completely. Took a long time to get over it. When my ex 
boyfriend of 7 years chose to go drinking with friends rather than visit his 2 week old daughter in emergency care. He dumped me when I told him his priorities were off. The next day he told me he got a BJ from a stranger after he dumped me. He said he wanted to tell me that because I was his best friend. I hate it when people do crap like that to kids. It's like, frick up your own life. Don't bring this innocent child down with you. I hope you met a nice guy or girl who is willing to make your kid their priority. TL. DR. My father left me when I was an infant. He never paid child support. He is well established and his family does not know I exist. It is hitting me harder now than ever because I am now a father myself. My father left town when I was 6 months old. Even when he was around. I think he only saw me a handful of times. I did not even see a picture of him until I was 16. Not kidding. I did not even know what he looked like. My old boss went to high school with him. Showed me his picture in the yearbook. Looked up his contact information and everything for me. When I got the courage up to call, I spoke to my grandfather, my dad's dad. He told me that I had made a mistake by calling. I should never contact them ever again. And that I should go to heck. He, estranged grandfather, died a month later. Karma is a B. My mother never spoke to me about all of this. My father has always been a mystery to me. I have been told that he left the country, that he died in the Gulf War, or that he is in jail by various people very close to me. But now that I am older, 23, and I have a son of my own, it is hitting me hard. I put it in the back of my mind till my son was born. The day after he was born I spent 5 minutes on Google where I got his current address and phone number. He changed his name after I was born, but he was very easy to find. With the information acquired in that 5 minutes I found out that he has a wife and kids, living in an area where the median income is over $135,000, suburb of Seattle. I even got a Google Street View picture of his house. He has never paid child support. This man left me when I was a baby and was able completely rebuild his life. His family has no idea that I exist. I cannot begin to tell you how this has impacted my life. There is no worse betrayal than child abandonment, but it is not all bad. I had a child at 20, worked full time through college and graduated because I was driven to be a better man from my own experiences. I would never leave my child after what I have been through. I do not know if I should contact him via phone, or just show up at his front door and give his family the shock of their lives. <laughs> moved in with the guy that I was dating, a week after I moved in. He went away for the weekend. I baked and cooked for him while he was away because I knew he was going to be exhausted when he came back. He came back, told me he met another woman and that we were done. From that moment on, he was emotionally and verbally abusive. The B was threatened by me because I was his roommate and I was attractive. Well maybe you shouldn't have been a home wrecking C. So he decided to be an butthole to me to prove to her that any feelings he had for me were gone. It was horrid. What was worse was that he was a master manipulator. We had mutual friends. Every time they would come over to hang out, he would twist all these little stories and lies to make me look like a crazy bee. It was awful. I got out when I finally couldn't have a better life now. Dated the guy I lost my V card to for about 6 months. Thought I was in love at 17 stroke 18 and was blind to his faults. He was older and had a kid from what I thought was an ex-GF per his story but turns out he was engaged to her the whole time we were seeing each other. Already had trust issues so that didn't help. Found out a week before his wedding and promptly broke all ties. He still tried getting me back a month later. You should have gone to the wedding and objected to it. Testicular torsion. My own freaking testicle twisted itself round twice cutting off the blood flow and causing me the most pain I've ever experienced. I'm so glad I went straight to hospital. I may be sat here with an inch long cut in my bowel sack, but I was only about an hour away from it becoming dead and having to be cut out. TL. Doctor. Testicular torsion. My testicle hung itself. Perhaps after years of not being used he decided to end it all and hang himself. Poor little guy. Okay so this story is kind of long. Growing up me and my once best friend were next door neighbors. We were the same age and attended the same private school. We were practically brothers. We used to have sleepovers and play video games together. Loved playing basketball too. We had a ton of shared experiences. He didn't have the best parents. 
His dad was an alcoholic and his mother was neglectful so we kind of brought him into our family. During family trips across states we would bring him along with us. He knew all my family members and relatives. We really treated him as a member of the family. We attended the same high school as well. I started dating the girl who was the love of my life in 10th grade. My friend accepted her and we had awesome times together. Senior year she got pregnant which came as a surprise to both of us. We hadn't really planned things out and now had to put our futures on hold. We both graduated. Few weeks later she gave birth. We were at an impasse. She agreed to put her future on hold to raise the child. I was scared about how I would support a child. I could barely take care of a goldfish and now I had the responsibility for providing for a family. My best friend told me he would help us out to take away some of the burden. I was really thankful to him. He sat me down and assured me he'd always be there for me and my GF. I couldn't afford to go to college while taking care of my GF and child so I decided to join the army. I was reassured by the fact that my best friend would be back home taking care of my GF and child. I figured the army was the best way I could support them while making decent money. During the period of service I was stationed in Afghanistan and saw some absolutely terrible things. Just awful things. People's dying. Limbs being blown up. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. When I had a break in service I came home. I wanted to surprise my friend and GF. First I decided I would visit my friend's house. I walked to his house and knocked on his door. There was no answer for a long period of time. Finally 3 minutes he came to the door in a hurry. We hugged and I came inside. Conveniently my GF was there too who I was thrilled to see. I asked if we could all play some video games like we used to for old times sake. My friend busted out the old 64 and we started playing Mario Party. I was winning until my best friend landed on Boo. He decided to steal my gold star from me putting me in last place. I couldn't believe he would do that to me after all the years of friendship we had. I had never felt more betrayed in my life. That moment was the end of our friendship. You freaking mother. Frick. My best friend made my girlfriend pregnant. We were 14 at the time. We go to her party. I get drunk. Falls asleep. When I wake up I don't remember anything from the day before. My GF doesn't answer my calls. And she avoids me at school. When I mention that I hardly remember anything from the party. He starts talking about how crazy and awesome it was. When I start talking to my GF again. She doesn't mention the party at all. I think 2 or 3 weeks later my GF doesn't show up at school. I ask her best friend. My GFS best friend was my best friend's girlfriend. Where she is and she says the dentist. When I a couple of days later ask my GF how it was at the dentist. She doesn't know where that I am talking about. I then confront her best friend and ask where she really was. She says that she thwas pregnant with my baby. GHT I knew that my GF was going to the doctor to confirm that she was pregnant. With my baby I call her and wonder WTF is going on. She then says that we had sex on the party and it was my fault for not using a condom. I realized that she had to be lying because everyone said I passed out on the couch and laid there all night. I get that confirmed. And I asks around who it was. It turns out it's my best friend. Someone saw they kiss in a bedroom. I confront her and she admits it all but says that she got raped by my friend. She then starts crying. I call my friend and Jed admit it too. But he sweared he didn't rape her. It was all really weird. A few months later I moved away. Nothing to do with any of this. And I haven't spoken to any of them since. Last I hears my friend was in jail. Holy. 0.0. .0. Currently I am going through the process of divorcing and going through criminal trials with my husband and father of my toddler. Three months ago, he beat me in front of her, put me in the hospital, then instead of giving an apology, bragged about it, then, tried to get a restraining order on Emmy and take my daughter, claiming I'm the abusive one. I'm 115 pounds, he is a 210 pound trained cage fighter, at the same time. I learned he'd been having an affair with my best friend since before I met her. They formed a plan to have me meet her and become close so they could more easily have an affair. I let her live with us for 6 months. 
the state brought a lot of charges against him for what he did to me, and now they are both telling me she is testifying against me and they are both going to take my daughter from me and make my life heck. The evidence against him is astounding, and I can easily discredit her testimony. But still, the betrayal is beyond painful. The state is now trying to bring charges against her as well, and he's getting no less than 2 years in prison. Family court awarded me full custody, I was able to take my name off our lease and stick him with the eviction, and he has been arrested 3 times in the last 2 months in front of me, so karma is working out in my favor. My mom wasn't a part of my life from the age of 2, to pretty much now. My dad got custody when they divorced, pretty rare in 1964. My dad raised me, which was great, best dad ever. Problem was his work took him away for long periods of time. Anywhere from 3 days to 3 months. So my grandma raised me and I spent lots of time at other relatives. It was very difficult growing up in the 60s without a mom, in a small town. Everyone else had a mom. As a kid, my mom would promise to show up to visit and then not do it. During childhood I honestly thought my parents didn't spend time with me because I wasn't good enough. Fast forward to last month when I ended a 19 month relationship because he was freaking around with his other girlfriend of 4 years who's married, the whole time. He kept following me, calling me, texting me, threatened to kill me, keyed my car, etc. Got a stalking protective order. He violated it several times. He is now in jail. Last night I went dancing with a friend. When I walked by one of his friends in the parking lot she started screaming at me that she hates me and I'm a W. I can't even begin to imagine the crap he's telling people. I've given up any relationship I've had with his friends or mutual friends. I trust no one right now. I'm lonely and fighting depression. My impact statement to the judge and I've thought long and hard about this, is to request they keep him locked up for at least a year, mostly so I can feel safe and hopefully he won't be so hellbent on being mean and vindictive. I would move in a heartbeat, but I own my home and have children established in local schools. I understand being established, but do what you have to do to protect yourself. Your kids deserve a parent who doesn't live in fear or have depression anxiety because of some lunatic. Do what you need to do for yourself. My ex fiance Shortly after we got engaged I found out that she was cheating on me and we split up. After about a month we decided to try again and see if we could make things work out. But we inevitably failed. All in all it's a normal story at this point. But it's what I found out later that made it pretty fricked up. Apparently right around the time that we got engaged she actually got pregnant with my child. She knew that at the time I was against abortion, not a moral stance or anything, just I would prefer to have my child than abort it, so she went as deceptive as possible. She started hooking up with a guy at work and waited about a month to say that she was pregnant, and that it was his. She got him to pay for the abortion of my kid by tricking him into thinking it was his. This is when we split up, right before she followed through with the abortion. She apparently wanted me to find out that she was cheating so that she could have the abortion and go home and rest without having to deal with me. Once she felt like she was back to normal again she found me and decided that we would try again. This was the month that we were split up. I found out about it later from her best friend. Normally I wouldn't put much into it but they were emails from my ex fiance directly, talking about the whole thing and how it all went down. Her friend felt bad for me and decided that I deserved to know. Apparently I was the last one to find out, including my own cousin knowing before me. They all stayed her friend and visited her after the abortion and never said a word to me about it. Fuck, I am so sorry dude. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.